Everyone had forgotten about the second dark wand of which Adina the evil ice witch had taken ownership of. They all presumed that the wand had been consumed by the crystal of souls along with her and didn't think about it anymore. That could not have been further from the truth. Time would reveal its true whereabouts with dire consequences lying ahead. Forest of Darkness, Chapter 1, Breaking Cover The heavy sound of the ornate door knocker echoed through the house. After a minute or so, the two people knocking looked anxiously at each other. A bright light shone through the twin windows in the heavy arched wooden door, just before it was flung open as far as the chain would allow. Hello? Who's there? Elizabeth Corey demanded. Two figures stepped out of the darkness into the pool of light. Elizabeth peered through the gap. John T? Mr Waite? What on earth are you doing here at this time of night? Is it possible to see Aaron and Lana? Mrs Gorry? it's quite important. Frowning, she said. They're in bed. What's so urgent that it can't wait until the morning? Do you know what time it is? Yes, but it's a matter of... Mr Waite nudged John T, cutting him off. Forcing a smile, he said, Not to worry, Mrs Gorry, we'll catch them tomorrow, at school. Just thought whilst passing we'd take the chance to see them about some schoolwork. Not that we make a habit of visiting pupils at their home, personally. Sorry for disturbing you, though. Good night. And pulling his companion back into the darkness, they heard the door shut and the security locks click. What did you do that for, Richard? We have to speak to them tonight. John T sounded peeved. I know. It was a one in three chance their mother would answer the door. Just our oh, look, they went to bed early. Don't worry, where there's a will, there's a way. We'll go around the back and try to attract their attention. What, throw stones at their bedroom windows? Jonty mocked. Have you got a better idea? Well, couldn't we leave it till the morning? I don't think Sherwood will darken overnight, do you? Every living thing under the dome in Sherwood, as huge as it is, is in grave danger, including us. So come on, Jonty, we're wasting time. They moved quickly and silently down the street until they found a private passageway leading to the back gardens of the houses. The moon disappeared behind thick black clouds, plunging the area into sudden darkness, so it took them a few minutes to find the right house. A six-foot-high metal gate, locked and bolted from the inside, was set into a solid stone wall guarding the rear of the gory property. What are we going to do now? We don't have permission to animate, and in this form there's no way either of us can climb over that, Jonty whispered. I know. So let's try another tack. Looking left, then right, and at all the upper windows to make sure they weren't seen, Mr Waite said, Come on, next door's garden doesn't seem quite so impossible to get through. In his haste, Jonty collided with the neighbour's dustbin. Tin cans bounced and rolled, making a hell of a din. Enough to raise the dead.